I want to discuss the Sortino Ratio, which is a measure of portfolio performance. To do that, let me compare it to the Sharp Ratio, which is a more commonly used measure of portfolio performance. So the Sharp Ratio looks at the excess return, and the excess return being the return of the portfolio over the risk-free rate, divided by a measure of risk, and that measure of risk is the standard deviation of the portfolio. The Sortino Ratio allows us to modify this a little bit. Rather than just simply using the risk-free rate, we choose some benchmark that we're trying to beat. So that benchmark could be the risk-free rate, but it also could be the um, return on some market index, or there could be some benchmark portfolio we are trying to beat. The big difference here is that rather than just look at standard deviation, it looks at the downside standard deviation. So if you think about it, you know, there's, there's some appeal there, right? If we set our, uh, you know, if we're looking at standard deviation, positive values, right? Anytime the uh, portfolio beats the benchmark, that's a good thing. So maybe we don't want that included in our calculation of risk. So we're only going to look at the downside standard deviation. That is only when the values are less than zero. Let's also compare this to the information ratio, which I've previously discussed. Um, this uses, again, a benchmark portfolio like the Sorrentino ratio. But the difference is here it uses again, some sort of standard deviation. So again, the difference here is that we're looking at downside standard deviation. Here we would be looking at um, just a regular standard devi deviation calculation. So let's take a look at how you calculate this in Excel. So here I have some um, monthly portfolio returns and some monthly returns for the market. So the average portfolio return is 0.71%. But let's see how this looks. What we want to do is we want to calculate the excess return, that is, how much the portfolio beats the market. So let's do that. So we're going to have each month the excess return. And I'm going to copy that down. And you can see we have um, here in June a very nice positive return. That is, we beat the benchmark by quite a bit. But down here in December, we have a very, very large negative return um, where the portfolio was actually 13% below the market return. Now, in order to calculate the Sortino ratio, we need to calculate, or we need to figure out which one of these are negative. So we can do that by using an if statement in Excel. So the test we're going to have is if this is less than zero, then we want to put the value in. Okay. Otherwise, we just want to leave it blank. So I'm just going to put a couple of um, quote marks here. Let me close that up and let's copy that down. So you can see we actually have a number of periods where it's negative and then actually only one, two, three, four that are positive. So let's calculate the Sortino ratio. So the Sortino ratio is going to be the average excess return Okay, divided by this downside standard deviation. And we're also going to want to adjust for the fact that this is monthly data, so we're going to want to annualize it. So here's the formula. So we want average. So we want to average this excess return. divided by 
the standard deviation of this and again we want to do that adjustment so let's see let's put uh, parentheses around this and we're going to multiply it by the square root of 12 so that's going to annualize it for us so let's see what we get we get a minus 1.06791 which tells you that this fund manager the fact that it's negative is not beating the benchmark on average all right and um, you know we don't have anything to compare it to but just the fact that it's negative makes it bad now clearly if we were comparing portfolios and let's say we had positive values for the Sortino ratio we would be looking for the portfolio or we would want to choose the portfolio that had the highest Sortino ratio, right? The highest excess return to downside risk. So relatively straightforward to compute, okay? And here we're just looking at this downside risk as opposed to total risk.